Before we start today's video, thank you to those in the previous Canucks video who commented, Timra. If you want a chance to be featured in the next one, then stick around to the end of this Canucks video here. But we're starting this video off with a thought, because you just know it, man. You just know Alex Edler's 100th NHL career goal is gonna come against the Vancouver Canucks. 110%, you know, it's gonna be that way. Edler comes into 2020-2021 with 99 career goals, and he proceeds to put up his worst offensively productive season ever. And it's by a long shot, too. Vancouver Canucks defenseman Alex Edler, the top guy in games played points and goals and all that for defensemen in the franchise, is going to the free agent market. According to the agent Mark Stowe via Rick Dollywall and Donnie and Dolly on Czech TV. Okay, let's talk about Alex Edler. And, I mean, before we do that, another piece I wanted to talk about before we got into that discussion Mark Stowe, the agent, says that the Canucks' offer was not offensive or anything to Alex Edler. The decision of him going to the market was just a decision that he made himself. So it doesn't have anything to do with the Canucks lowballing Edler or whatever. It's just he thought about it, he saw the situation the Canucks are in, and he was like, yeah, let's go to the market. So for Alex Edler, man, I will say this right here at the very beginning, goodbye. Fantastic defenseman. Overall, I'm not going to say in particular in years or whatever, because in general, Alex Edler, I think everybody can kind of agree, the Eagle himself, one of the best defensemen the Canucks have ever had. Maybe not talent-wise, you could always say that Prime Olin or Prime Erhoff or Prime Quinn Hughes, I guess, maybe Quinn Hughes even now, is better than Edler was in his prime when he was in his heyday back in like 2010 or whatever, but... Alex Edler has been a heart and soul, all situations kind of guy for the Vancouver Canucks. Number one power play for years. Number one penalty kill for years. It's honestly kind of, you know, it's kind of sad taking a look at how things are going right here. But at the same time, it's like, man, it's not really the most undesirable outcome, I would think. Because for Alex Edler, as we noted, the guy came into the NHL... 2021 season with 99 goals on his name. He was coming off of 33 points in 59 games played in the 2019-20 season, 7 points in 17 games in the bubble. We were all kind of saying to ourselves, man, Edler just put up 30 points in 50 games two seasons in a row, and he had 10 goals in 2018-19. This guy is honestly kind of rejuvenating his career at the ripe old age of 33, 34 years old. But in 2021... Oh boy. Eight points in 52 games? Zero goals? Alex Edler just became an offensive black hole this year, and I don't want to make it seem like, oh, it's because Quinn Hughes was on the power play and Nate Schmidt was on the power play and Myers was on the power play. It was all situations, man. Alex Edler was a lot worse this year than he was in the past, but that does not, to me, take away from the big body of work that he has done in general. He got that $6 million contract extension for two years a few years ago for a reason. He has been in this organization for a long, long, long freaking time. And if he's going to go out there and say, you know, I want to go out there and get a cup. Let's go out there, go the Luke Shen route and sign with a team for a cheap deal, be a depth guy and eventually make it to the second, third, fourth round, maybe even win a cup. Go get him, Alex Adler. You can go out there and do that because you've earned that right in my heart. It's just kind of unfortunate because we know that whenever the Canucks play that other team that Edler's going to go to, you know he's going to break his extremely long goalless drought against us, right? It's going to happen that way because the hockey gods hate Vancouver. At this point, though, let's just go over the career, talk about what Alex Edler has done. He has always made himself known as a pretty good, underrated guy. Because he was taken in the third round of the 2004 draft, what, 17 years ago? Oh, man. He spent a little bit more time in Sweden before eventually coming over to the WHL with the Kelowna Rockets. A very good breakout offensive year for the overage defenseman back then. And eventually making the Vancouver Canucks full-time in 2007-2008. He was seen, back then at least, as an early 20s guy, as a pretty good candidate to becoming a pretty solid top-four defenseman. I remember back in the old NHL games, like NHL 10 or NHL 11 or whatever it was, Alex Edler 
Fiddler had four and a half green star potential, which is like elite high potential in today's NHL video games. That was kind of the perception that Edler had. He was a young guy, early 20s, whatever, who was going to be fantastic. And he did nothing in the early 2010s to tell us otherwise. 37 points in 80 games in 2008-2009. 2009-2010 saw him put up 42 in 76 games. He was at 30 points in 51 games in 2011, half a point a game in the playoffs as well. Back then, you gotta remember, he was only like 23-24. And eventually, he posted a career-high 49 points in 82 games in 2011-2012. Now, you can say, oh, he was never really a goal scorer. It's why he's got 99 goals today after being in the NHL for over a decade. But he was always the kind of guy that just did everything right. He could hit guys. He could pass the puck. There were a few odd moments where Alex Edler would literally go on breakaways, and he would score really nice goals on breakaways. It was to the point that Elaine Vigneault started using Edler in the gosh darn shootout. Like, he was honestly not bad in the shootout because his one-on-one -on -one puck skills versus other goalies were honestly pretty developed. Eventually, though, when things started to calm down in Vancouver, the Sedin stopped producing at 100-point paces, we had the dark days of the Tortorella years and the second coming of the Willie years and all that, things got a little bit different for Alex Edler. For one, I remember the big problem that I had with Edler back in 20... what was it? 2017, 2018, was when Brock Besser made his debut. Do you remember those days, Brock Besser's rookie season, when we had ourselves a top power play of Sedin, Sedin, Besser, Edler? Edler and, like, whoever else. I completely forgot. And we had the big controversy as to why Alex Edler would never, under any circumstance, pass the puck to Brock Besser on the power play. We made entire videos about this back then because it was such a big deal. And I remember it was, like, such a small, minute little detail. But social media, Canucks fan social media, Twitter and Instagram and all that, they were all over this. Like, some of the comments on the earlier Instagram post back in 2017, 2018 were just, Edler, man, pass the puck to Brock. Why don't you pass it to Brock? We have this new hotshot young rookie on our team. He's got a snipe for days, and you're not giving him the puck. He's got so many goals on even strength and all that, but he can't get anything on the power play because he's not getting the puck. And eventually, I mean, things kind of worked itself out. Edler was still a top power play guy on that squad that year. Eventually, in 2019-20, he kind of went away from that role because we got this new guy named Quinn Hughes, who was really, really extraordinary that he made himself known on the first power play as well. He was still a pretty good producer, man. 30 points the previous three years, if you don't count this year. And, I mean... I don't want to make it seem like getting him off of the power play for 2021 was the entire reason he stopped producing, because, oh, Schmidt's on power play 2, and Myers on power play 2, and Hughes on power play 1, no time for Edler. It's not like being on power play 2 would have changed anything either, because, I mean, the second power play this year was absolutely terrible. They only produced, like, one goal or whatever it was. I don't want to make it seem like if Edler was on power play 2, he would have been at 30 points this season again, because... I think it's just really obvious to see, man. Edler this year is not the same Edler like he was before. Does he have the potential to maybe going back to what he was a year ago, two years ago, 30 points in 50 games? Maybe, if he improves his foot speed. If it's up to him, though, if he goes over to an NHL team, they give him sheltered minutes, it's going to be really nice to see if he's able to go out there, win a cup or whatever, because when it comes to Vancouver Canucks guys not getting their dues, Burroughs in the finals, again, losing, again, that sucks. Sedin's finally trying to get that redemption tour coming back onto the squad in managerial roles. Roberto Luongo, a guy over there in the Florida Panther system doing his thing. Luke Shen was probably one of the only guys that was able to fulfill that because he won twice with Tampa Bay. Good job for you, Luke Shen. But one may start to ask themselves, okay, with Edler gone, what does our left side look like? And that's probably the most interesting conversation we can have as well. This video is kind of winding down, so I don't want to talk about that too much here. But Hughes, Ulevi, Rathbone as a 1-2-3 on the left side? Oh, that is really, really young, man. Who knows if Jim Benning's going to go out there, maybe acquire another left-handed defenseman to play on the left side. Or maybe they can just move Schmidt over to the left. I don't know if he sticks around then, I guess. But talk to me in the comments what you think. If you made it to the end of this video, comment in the comments session below ikea meatballs because yeah if you saw the video of the interview of the canucks and edler talking about meatballs and ikea you know exactly what i'm talking about here but talk to me in the comments what you think about alex edler and his goodbye from vancouver i hope you enjoyed this video rolls 99 and bye <laughs>